The scientific community and governments across the world are in agreement. The climate is changing and represents one of the greatest challenges humanity has ever encountered. To understand what climate change is, we first need to understand what weather and climate are. In a nutshell, weather describes the conditions outside right now in a specific place, while climate describes the weather conditions that are expected in a region at a particular time of year. Climate change, as you may already have guessed, is a change in the usual weather found in a place. This could be a change in how much rain a place usually gets in a year, or it could be a change in a place's usual temperature for a month or a season. Throughout Earth's history, the climate has changed several times, but these changes occurred in periods of thousands of years, while now they are happening in periods of hundreds of years, or even less. And the reason for that is the quantity of greenhouse gases emitted into the atmosphere by human activities. Some gases in the Earth's atmosphere trap heat and stop it escaping into space. These are called greenhouse gases. These gases act as a warming blanket around the Earth, known as the greenhouse effect. The greenhouse effect is critical to our survival. In fact, without greenhouse gases, Earth would be about 30 degrees colder than it is today. However, since the Industrial Revolution, we've been adding more and more greenhouse gases into the air, trapping even more heat. Instead of keeping Earth at a warm, stable temperature, the greenhouse effect is heating the planet at a much faster rate. This is called the enhanced greenhouse effect, and it's the main cause of climate change. The three main gases that contribute to the greenhouse effect are carbon dioxide. A minor but very important component of the atmosphere, carbon dioxide is released through natural processes such as respiration and volcano eruptions, and through human activities like burning fossil fuels, such as oil, gas, and coal which contain carbon dioxide that has been locked away in the ground for thousands of years. When we take these out of the land and burn them, we release the stored CO2 into the air. Deforestation is another contributing factor. Forests remove and store carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Cutting them down means that CO2 builds up quicker since there are no trees to absorb it. Not only that, but trees release the carbon they stored when we burn them. Humans have increased atmospheric CO2 concentration by 47% since the Industrial Revolution began. Today, there is more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere than there ever has been in the past 800,000 years. Methane is another hydrocarbon gas produced both through natural processes and human activities including the decomposition of wastes in landfills, agriculture, and especially rice cultivation, as well as ruminant digestion. Methane is a far more active greenhouse gas, being 30 times more powerful than carbon dioxide, but also one that is much less abundant in the atmosphere. Nitrous oxide is a powerful greenhouse gas, which is 10 times worse and nearly 300 times more potent than carbon dioxide. It is produced by soil cultivation practices, especially the use of commercial and organic fertilizers. The increased greenhouse gas emissions has led to a rise of global mean temperature of 1 degree Celsius, which will have serious consequences. Let's take a look at a few of them. Glacier melting. Climate change is amplified in the polar regions. The Greenland and Antarctic ice sheets have decreased in mass. Glaciers are retreating almost everywhere around the world, and less fresh water will be available, since glaciers store about three quarters of the world's fresh water. Satellite observations reveal that the amount of spring snow cover in the northern hemisphere has decreased over the past five decades, and the snow is melting earlier. The Arctic Ocean is expected to become essentially ice-free in summer before mid-century. Much of this melting ice contributes to sea level rise. Sea level rise. Global sea level has risen by about 8 inches since reliable record keeping began in 1880. It is projected to rise another 1 to 8 feet by 2100. This is the result of added water from melting land ice and the expansion of seawater as it warms. Sea level rise will continue past 2100 because the oceans take a very long time to respond to warmer conditions at the Earth's surface. Ocean waters will therefore continue to warm and sea level will continue to rise for many centuries at rates equal to or even higher than those of the current century. Wildlife. Climate change is happening so fast that many plants and animal species are struggling to cope. Many terrestrial freshwater and marine species have already moved to new locations. As temperatures change, many species are on the move. Some butterflies, foxes, and alpine plants have migrated farther north or to higher, cooler areas. Some species, including mosquitoes, jellyfish, and crop pests, are thriving. Booming populations of bark beetles that feed on spruce and pine trees have devastated millions of forested acres in the U.S. Ecosystems will continue to change. Some species will move farther north or become more successful. Others, such as polar bears, won't be able to adapt and could become extinct. Oceans Between one quarter and one third of our fossil fuel emissions are consumed by the Earth's oceans, which are now 30% more acidic than they were in pre-industrial times. This acidification poses a serious threat to aquatic life, particularly creatures such as oysters, clams, and coral. It's not only a tragedy for wildlife. Around half a billion people rely on fish from coral reefs as their main source of protein. 
Losing the reefs will also take a major toll on tourism. Coral reefs provide tourism-related income to at least 94 countries. Oceans have also taken up over 90% of the excess heat accumulated on Earth due to global warming. Warmer water cannot contain as much oxygen as cold water, so heating is expected to lead to less oxygen in the ocean. Extreme weather. Around the world, average sea surface temperatures are rising. As seas get warmer, they add more water vapor and heat energy into the atmosphere. This extra heat and water just happens to be the perfect fuel for hurricanes and in the right conditions can make dangerous storms even more powerful. The intensity, frequency, and duration of North Atlantic hurricanes, as well as the frequency of the strongest of them, have all increased since the early 1980s. Hurricane-associated storm intensity and rainfall rates are projected to increase as the climate continues to warm. Mass migration and food security. Our food supply depends on climate and weather conditions. Although agricultural practices may be adaptable, changes like increased temperatures, water stress, diseases, and weather extremes create challenges for the farmers and ranchers who put food on our tables. Global wheat and maize yields are already beginning to decline. While warming temperatures might initially help certain crops, the overall picture is negative. Global crop yields are slowing down as a result of events related to climate change, like reduced rainfall and higher temperatures. Millions of people may be displaced by 2050. Climate change may become the biggest driver of displaced people, according to Antonio Guterres, the UN High Commissioner for Refugees. In 2008, 36 million people were displaced by natural disasters. At least 20 million of those people were driven from their homes by disasters related to climate change, like drought and rising sea level. He anticipates that countries in the Southern Hemisphere will be the most affected by displacement in the future. If this happens, not only states, but cultures and identities will be drowned. Health. Human health is vulnerable to climate change. The changing environment is expected to cause more heat stress, an increase in waterborne diseases, poor air quality, and diseases transmitted by insects and rodents. Extreme weather events can compound many of these health threats. All of these sound terrifying and should concern everyone, but you should know what solutions do exist. The two conventional responses are mitigation, preventing as much additional warming as possible by reducing greenhouse gas emissions, and adaptation, adjusting society to compensate for unavoidable warming. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change has stressed the need to keep global warming below 1.5 degrees Celsius compared to pre-industrial levels in order to avoid some irreversible impacts. In order to limit global warming to less than 1.5 degrees Celsius with a high likelihood of success, the IPCC estimates that global greenhouse gas emissions will need to be net zero by 2050. To achieve net zero emissions, we need a massive transformation in how we produce and consume electricity. We need a newer, better transportation system. We need to stop deforestation. We need a climate-friendly agricultural system, greater investment in renewable energies, transition to a low-carbon economy, and promoting energy efficiency. The scale of these changes will require significant federal policy that puts a price on carbon. It also requires international cooperation. The Paris Agreement, signed in 2016, reflects the world's best effort to solve climate change so far, though it doesn't include the emissions reductions we need. No matter how quickly we reduce emissions, the reality is that certain climate impacts are inevitable. The seas are rising. Temperatures break records every year. Droughts, floods, and extreme weather are damaging communities today. Cutting carbon is the only long-term solution for avoiding climate impacts. In the short term, we need to adapt. That means everything from discouraging development in high-risk areas, to planning for water scarcity, to building more resilient cities and communities. Investments should be scientifically solid and socially just and focused where the impacts are the greatest, often in low-income communities and developing countries.